as we've gone through this war over the past year in Israel, uh, you know, there's good news, there's bad news, you're waiting for uh, uh, news from the front, and uh, thank God it hasn't been quite like uh, the prophet Eli uh, sitting in Shiloh waiting for uh, the uh, news from the battlefront, and it's it comes back, and it's horrible, and they've uh, taken the ark and were defeated, and he fell over dead. Hallelujah. We have to be onward, Christian soldiers, uh, this side of the cross, believing in his victory, persevering in this spiritual battle, and really uh, seeing God do wonderful things. And I do want to talk about, um, you know, uh, really seeing with the eyes of, of faith. Uh, because there was something that uh, our sister Suzette Hetting uh, shared with us first with our staff in devotions right before the feast. This would have been about two weeks ago. Uh, and then I think she shared a little, she she just, uh, you know, gave this verse as part of her message again. And it was like rediscover, rediscovering one of the most precious and incredible uh, passages in the Bible when, when she spoke down at Kephar Nogdim on the first night of the feast. And it's from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Now, we know this passage and uh, and but, you know, going through this war and all, We've seen such bad things, and we've heard such bad news so many times, and yet we've seen victories and everything. But, uh, you know, this is an incredible passage that that we haven't even scratched the surface yet. We haven't really seen or heard, uh, even, even in reading the Bible, uh, the the amazing God that we serve, and the things, the incredible and glorious and and uh, just remarkable things that He can do that uh, eye has not seen, or ear not heard, and the way she said it, it just had a fresh anointing, a quickening on it for us to to believe for good things. Of course, it comes from uh, the book of Isaiah. Chapter 64, it's sort of a, um, it's not a verbatim quote, whether they're quoting here from um, from the Septuagint, a lot of the New Testament, when they old, uh, quote the, the Old Testament, the Tanakh, they're quoting from uh, the Greek uh, version that existed in the first century in the early church. Uh, but in the original Hebrew, uh, translated to English, it's Isaiah 64, uh, quite a powerful prayer by the, the prophet of the Lord, Isaiah. Oh, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down, that the mountains might shake at your presence as fire burns brushwood and fire causes water to boil to make your name known to your adversaries, that the nations may tremble at your presence when you did awesome things for which we did not look. You came down, the mountain shook at your presence. And then verse 4, Isaiah 64, verse 4, for since the beginning of the world, <clears throat> men have not heard nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God beside you who acts for the one who waits for him. Here it's, it's God is doing astounding things for those who wait for him, who trust in him, and we have trusted now uh, over the past year, we trusted in God over COVID when we came together for the day, uh, for the, the GPG once a week back then. It really helped sustain us here in Jerusalem. I know many of you around the world that in that dark time, we had the light of God's word and pressing on being good soldiers in the Lord. Um, but here it's uh, it's those who wait, those who come before him. We're, we're actually waiting on him like a waiter at a restaurant waits. And Lord, we want to serve you. We want to pray to you. We want to worship you. We want to give you the glory. And as we focus on him every day, 
There are th we have not perceived with the ear, we haven't heard, nor has the eye seen uh, any God beside you who acts. It's not just believing acts, who actions by God, who acts for the one who waits for him. Again, in the New Testament, eye has not seen nor ear heard, nor has entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. And it was just a fresh quickening of this verse because of all the uh, you know bad things that we've seen with our eyes and heard with our ears, the bad reports that uh, e even you know your heart goes out to to a lot of the innocent people in Gaza, what they're suffering, but it's certainly what uh, the suffering on this side of this war here in Israel, and especially the hostage families, the families of those who who lose soldiers on the front lines, the uh, terror attacks, the missile attacks. It's a daily battle that we're in. And to to be able to have that quickening and refocus, we've seen God do some astounding things. We've seen God help Israel recover and get its confidence back and going out and doing awesome and, and uh, exploits with the pager operations and so many things. And yet it, it hasn't even scratched the surface of all that our mighty, mighty God can do. And I just want to encourage us today in this battle, in this fight, I hope it's fresh and it's got a fresh um, uh, quickening to you too, that, uh, um, you know, what, what our eyes look on, uh, I, you know, we read, we go, everyone... Hardly anyone uses the newspapers anymore, the print papers. We're all going to our websites and on our phone, and we're looking, and we're seeing things. And, you know, so many times you get disappointed. So many times it's hard to step back and get that bigger picture that Israel is winning. Israel is in victory. We had another four soldiers um, killed in, in South Lebanon. The fighting there is intense. Uh, Hezbollah has certain weapons that they're more adept at using, and they seem to be more lethal than what Hamas had. Hamas had the terror tunnels, booby traps, certain things, ambushes. But in South Lebanon, they've got these anti-tank missiles that they fire at people uh, and at houses when they see soldiers in them. They've got the drones. They've got a much better drone game than Hamas did. And uh, they might not have to fly the drone very far, low altitude to surprise some soldiers. This uh, has been, you know, the uh, the reality of recent days. And if you get your eyes stuck on that, you know, it's not so nice. There was a ramming attack today uh, down near Tel Aviv. It's a suspected terror attack that's not uh, totally certain yet whether the guy who uh, who was driving a truck and it plowed into a bus stop, it's probably 99% sure, but they still were saying suspected uh, uh, truck ramming, uh, but 30 some people hurt. I think there's one dead, more in, many more uh, seriously injured from that, other attacks around the land. But if we keep our eyes on that, we, we don't have our eyes on the Lord and all the amazing things that he's been doing and can do, that the enemy is determined, but God is much more determined to bring Israel out in a much better place. And I just, um, I'm, you know, coming through the feast, having that word quickened, my eyes are just, uh, are lifted a little higher than my phone or my, uh, my uh, computer screen to look to uh, uh, an amazing God who uh, his view from the heavenlies of things, the victory's already won. You read this passage before it in, in 1 Corinthians 2, verse uh, starting with verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, not yet the wisdom, uh, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age, who are coming to nothing. Uh, do I need to repeat that? That the rulers of this age and the wisdom of this age, they are coming to nothing. They are destined to pass away. And it is the glory of God that will rest upon us forever. 
you you read this uh so we can take uh encouragement just from that verse and that thought that the things going on around us thank god it's passing and people we you know we live in a broken world and people say how how could god allow so much sin so much violence such a broken world well he gave us our own will and and how can man do all this but it's it's really a matter that that god has allowed it in this world to let it be this this uh filter to filter out the people who truly want to live with him forever in order to keep all this sin and rebellion and violence out of eternity and that's very important because eternity is a long time and we need to have our eyes on it our eyes have not seen nor ear heard nor entered a heart uh we haven't we haven't heard we hear bad news and oh my goodness and you hear some good news you get excited but we haven't stra- uh scratched the surface of un- knowing and understanding the goodness of god i remember um our brother lance lambert preaching one night at the feast about the cross and uh he said we may uh we may never know all that was accomplished on the cross why because we'll never come to the end of eternity and uh all the things that he purchased for us there that our eyes are going to lay lay uh on incredible incredible things for all eternity and what we go through now is just passing and the rulers of this age and the the, the enemies of, of Israel now they will come to nothing but it says that we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory did you hear that that God hid things in the past uh and and it was a mystery hidden in the old testament that the apostles by the holy spirit he, the holy spirit shone his light upon it it was revealed to the apostles and here the apostle paul is saying that these this wisdom uh hidden as a mystery in ages past that that god ordained it he foreordained it he already established it before the world for for our glory that we could share in his glorious future hallelujah it's for our glory that's for deep powerful i hope this word is lifting some people up it says which none of the rulers of this age knew for had they known they would have never they would not have crucified the lord of glory hallelujah that uh, even jesus on the cross he said forgive them they don't know what they're doing they have no clue that they have laid their hands on on the very son of god and put him to a cruel death and he even said to the lord that day in the midst of his suffering they really don't have a clue god what they're doing and we can say that about some of it, some of israel's enemies today they really don't know what they've gotten themselves into that they're touching the apple of god's eyes they have no idea that that what they're doing is going to lead to incredible victories for israel and glory to god amen and if they had known it they'd never attack israel they just back off but uh these things are for ordained for the glory of god and we need to uh come along for this journey with our heavenly father to see how he wants to solve it now i just want to go i i thought it was nice and and very fitting that the um the opening songs were from the uh the when when we uh went to the sea of galilee and recorded some uh worship videos for the virtual feast in 2021 i just had the idea back then let's let's go up there and and record s- some of our worship and a whole the whole uh that day just as we go to the dead sea or the sea of galilee at the first of the feast we wanted to go out somewhere and so we even had a, a message uh, um 
from the, the that Jesus boat, and uh, it was a wonderful setting and a wonderful time in the midst of of all that uh, uh, very straining and difficult period. But uh, I want to talk about Jesus and one of the stories of his disciples on a boat when the storm hit. It's from Mark chapter six, uh, where Jesus. Um, he was rejected among his own family when he went there to preach. They they start naming, uh, is this not the carpenter, uh, the son of Mary, and brother of James, uh, Jose, Judas, and Simon? So Jesus had four brothers. Probably it, they were either born to Mary after Jesus, or, or um, they were children of um, yeah, uh, there's a whole story how it might have been Joseph ha was married and had children, and his wife died, and that Mary came in as like an au pair, and all of a sudden she's pregnant, and he has to marry her, and uh, and she's pregnant with the son of, of Jesus. The question is, are these older brothers or younger brothers, uh, and, and whether Mary had children after she had Jesus, had other children? says, are not uh, his sisters here with us? Jesus had sisters, hallelujah. So they were offended at him, his own people in Nazareth. And he said, a prophet is not without honor, except in his own country, among his own relatives, in his own house. And it's interesting, it says he could do no mighty work, no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And uh, he marveled because of their unbelief. Among his own people, they just uh, didn't think uh, he was such a big deal. <laughs> uh, uh, whereas everywhere else, he was doing all kinds of miracles and all. There wasn't much faith. So he moved on. And he told his followers, Let, let's move to better, uh, better fishing grounds. And he sent the disciples out, uh, sent the 12 out and two by two, and gave them power over unclean spirits, and they went out, and God did uh, miracles through them, and they came back and uh, and were really uh, uh, amazed at it. Then you have this story of John the Baptist being beheaded, but uh, we're back to where Jesus, he saw that after he had, uh, um, afterwards, all the people are coming back to him, and he feeds the 5,000 with fishes and loaves. And then he saw that his disciples were tired. And he sent them in a boat. And uh, he went and prayed on a mountain. And they were already tired, but now they're straining at the oars. They're straining and rowing. Uh, because there's a wind that's come up against them, and he sees it, and he starts walking on the sea. They supposed it was a ghost and cried out, for they all saw him and were troubled, and immediately he talked with them and said, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. I tell you, this, this command, do not fear, do not be afraid, uh, I think it was someone at the fee said it's the it's the most prevalent command in all the Bible. I thought it was uh, remember as a command. Do you uh, something that God commands? Remember this. Remember Moses. Remember Amalek. Remember uh, remember my body given for you. So all the things were to remember. But I think uh, do not be afraid. Do not fear. It's probably also very very prevalent. But it, when it comes from the mouth of Jesus, that's extra special. Be of good cheer. Amen. Let's be of good cheer today. It is I. Do not be afraid. He, and then he went up into the boat, and the wind ceased, and they were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure and marveled. Hallelujah. They were greatly amazed in themselves beyond measure. This thing that I have not seen nor ear heard, they saw something God that the Son of God did in front of them, uh, and, and it and was, it was calming this storm. Uh, it doesn't even say that he said, peace be still, like in the other, in the other story of him being asleep in the boat. Here he just steps in the boat and the wind ceased, and they were 
absolutely amazed at it. Hallelujah. We need to be amazed at God. It says here, they were amazed beyond measure and marveled. Then it adds, for they had not understood about the loaves because their heart was hardened. And I just want to encourage us today that uh, all the things as we follow the conflict here, um, and and we, we, we do not want to doubt God's goodness, his love for all humans, not for a minute. This is all the actions of man, ignorance by man. They don't understand the wisdom of God hidden from ages past, revealed in Christ, that uh, draws us into his arms and that we will share in his glory forever. Hallelujah. They don't understand it. And this world is full of troubles. It is full of war and violence and horrible things. Uh, you know, someone put something on the internet uh, today, uh, the other day on on um, uh, Twitter, X, that there's a, a genocide going on um, somewhere right now. I, I can't even remember somewhere in Africa that there are tens of thousands of people dying every month in in this genocide, and the world doesn't know anything about it. Uh, and, um, they know nothing about it. They know there's no news anywhere about Turkey shelling Kurdish towns in northern Syria, just absolutely shelling them flat, leveling Kurdish towns now because there was a terror attack a few uh, a few days ago in Turkey, and the world never hears about it. They hear about what's happening in Israel. It seems to be the focus. God wants it that way. He wants people to make a moral choice. But we believe that in the end, these things will come to pass, and we are headed for an eternity of good and great things. And uh, I'll share a little more about it later this week, but we have to stand amazed. It is, as it says here, greatly amazed beyond measure that if we take that bigger picture and we look at back on what God has done uh, over um, the past three, four, five, six months in in Israel defeating its enemies right now. It's as amazing as Gideon and his army hitting the pitcher, the light shine, they give a shout, and uh, and the enemy is routed because uh, uh, just amazing exploits and feats that we have to thank God for. Now, I'll share in a few minutes a little more about Israel's response to the Iranian attack, but let's uh, let's thank the Lord for um, for really his goodness that we are seeing things here in this battle, and we've seen things in our lives that God has opened our eyes, and I just, uh, that, that we would see even more with our eyes. I tell you, I shut my eyes now, and, and I say I, I, it's better not to look at my computer screen or my TV screen when I can close my eyes and see what God wants to show you and me, and may we see it here, even in Israel, coming out in victory in this battle. Yeah.